Hey, what's up, everyone? Bruno here, recapping week four of Big Brother Canada season six. And what a week it was. This week had so much going on, and, you know, it was the double eviction, which, you know, everyone looks forward to. It's always a good show, and you know what? This one didn't let down. There was so much going on, a lot to talk about, and I can't wait to break it down. So, that being said, let's do it. Last week, I talked about how Veronica threw that little vote uh, you know, gave Jesse that extra vote, which made it to like a 9-2 uh, for Jesse to get evicted. And I said it in the last video. If you haven't watched it, check it out. I said, listen, by doing that, people are going to find out. I know it seems like, oh, it's harmless and this and that. But there's nothing to do in that house. I will tell you firsthand. These people have 24 hours, 7 days a week. And it gives them something to do. It gives them a reason to talk to people and connect with people. It gives them something to do to find out who threw that vote. So I think Veronica made a big mistake by doing that. And you know what? It did come back and bite her this week. People did find out. And the worst part, I think, was, you know, she kept denying it. And I think she was so far into her lie that she had nowhere to go. But to keep going with it, she had no choice. She was in too deep. And it's a shame. I really do like Veronica. I think she was a very, very good addition to the cast. I think she brought a lot to the table. And uh, you know what? Her entertainment value is there. She's a different kind of character. She's not just a typical cookie cutter, you know, player. Uh, she's wild. And I actually really enjoyed watching her. And, and uh, you know what? I really liked uh, seeing how she was playing. And even though she's not the best player, uh, you know what? She had fight in her. And I like that. So she brought something different and I like that. Anyway, Veronica throws that vote. It does come back to bite her this week. And it's a shame. Uh, she didn't have a lot of time to play. And it sucks that, you know, the whole coming in late thing, I think that kind of worked against her too. But I'll get into that a little bit later. All right. So this week, Erica wins HOH. This girl is tearing it up. You know, she's won, I guess, what, three competitions by this point? A couple HOHs. This girl is killing it. She's a competition beast. And I think people are going to start catching on. So, um... You know, it's tough. It, it's tough when you're in that position because I think she's socially set up. I don't think she had to win this week, to be honest. I think she was in good with everybody. And, you know, I really, I know she's the type of player she wants to win everything. And it's not necessarily a good thing because people will take that shot when they can in a week that she can't play uh, for HOH. It's just an easy out. It's an easy, you know, shot at her. So, you know, I just think she's playing too hard with these competitions. You know, it looks good on paper, of course. But I'm talking longevity. I think it's good for her short-term game. She can uh, definitely make deals and, and, and all that stuff. But, you know, down the road, people are going to be like, hey, I can't beat her. I have to take her out. And, and people can even be thinking about, hey, when I'm, if I'm sitting beside her in Final Two, uh, she has such a big resume, uh, I can't compete with that and i got to take her out. So I think she's winning too many competitions this week. I don't think she had to. Again, I think she was socially set up well enough that there was other people that would have gone home before her. And I even think that no matter who would have gone home, she still would have been Okay, so Erica decides to nominate Maddie and Marin. She says she nominates them because there's a disconnect. She doesn't have a connection with either one of them. And that's a good answer. You know, that's a good reason. It's nothing personal. Just keep it short and sweet. You know, I just, I nominate you because we just have no connection. Obviously, Maddie and, and Marin feel that there's a disconnect too. So it's no surprise. So I think it was just a nice, clean, easy nomination. Um, you know, she didn't make too big of a deal of it. And I think her reasons were, uh, you know, very good reasons. And again, it's no surprise. So now we're going to go to the veto. So Erica says she wants to throw the veto competition, but she beasts out. This girl has to dial back a little bit. I think she's playing a little too hard and people are starting to see that, hey, this girl's a monster. This girl's winning all the competitions. We have to take a shot at her. So I, I think, you know, she's saying she wants to throw it, but I think if she really wanted to throw it, uh, she could have thrown at least the first part of it, unless maybe she wanted to see who was qualified or who got out of the first part and who she would play against in the second part. I could see that, but it just it, it didn't seem like she was trying to throw it at least at first anyway. But she says she was trying to throw it. You got to take her word for it. So Erica does win the veto. Um, this girl is a monster, such a good competitor. I really respect her her competitiveness and and her comp beast wins. She's been amazing. Uh, really, really respect that. Um, so here's the thing. Now, 
she already made two enemies. She already nominated two people in Marin and Maddie. So here's how nominations work. And I'll tell you firsthand, if someone puts you on the block, what they're telling you is you are the least important to their game. If someone's willing to put you up and risk your game, you mean nothing to them. And that's just the way it is. So, you know, by putting up Maddie and Marin, she's basically said, listen, you two are the bottom of my totem pole and I really don't care if you guys go home. So that's why she nominates them. But here's the thing, when she wins the veto and decides to use to use it on Veronica, or sorry, use it on Maddie to put Veronica on the block. Now she's pissed off a third person. So there's three people she's pissed off. One will go home and two will still be in the house. Now here's the thing. I don't see Marin as, you know, a vengeful person. I don't see it. But in a normal situation, she would have just pissed off two people. And, you know, if these people pay attention, if Marin pays attention, he should be like, hey, listen, she obviously doesn't care about my game. She just nominated me. She doesn't care if I go home. So if he wins HOH, he should take that shot back. It's just, it's such a clear answer. If someone were to nominate me, I would know, hey, they don't care about my game. They don't care if I go home. And it's just the way it is. That's just, that's just facts. So she does use the veto on, Veron on Maddie and put Veronica on the block. Maddie comes off. Maddie even says, hey, I'm a vengeful person. You save me, you put the veto around my neck, I'm still coming for you. And rightfully so. That's the right answer. Maddie should still be coming after Erica simply because Erica didn't care if she went home, you know, 24 hours earlier or whatever it is. So that is the right answer. The fact that Erica did put Maddie on the block just goes to show what she means, to, what Maddie means to Erica's game. Um, and that's just the way it is. So I want to talk about the speech at the veto ceremony. Man, Erica took some shots, man. Shots fired 100%. You know, the fact that she didn't just put Veronica on the block, she put her on the block and she basically said, listen, you think you're all that and I'm here to tell you, uh-uh, you're not all that. Uh, so she really, 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 uh, you know, gave her a shot. Now, here is the thing, guys. That right there, the whole house should have sat there and said, perfect. That's what I want to see. Obviously, Erica thinks Veronica is going to go home. I, you know, Ver Erica obviously wants Veronica to go home. So let's keep Veronica. This is how these things work, guys. Let them duke it out. Let them fight it out. Obviously, Veronica is going to come back at Erica and it's going to go back and forth. Erica said some things. She literally said, you think you're a bad bitch? I'm going to show you you're not. You know, that's fighting words, you know? So the house should be like, hey, Let's get rid of Marin. Who cares? It's Marin. He's not really doing much. And let's keep Veronica in the house and let's let them fight. We can kind of egg them on in the back, you know, just kind of fuel that fire and let them go at it. That's the kind of view that I would see. If I ever saw something like that, it's like, okay, guys, perfect. Let's throw fuel on this fire. Let's get them going. And each week they can take shots at each other. And as long as they're in the house, we're safe. So I think that veto speech, um, it wasn't really necessary, but you know what? Uh, it was good TV and it could have made something more than it really did. So uh, I'm just surprised the house didn't kind of use that to their advantage. So then we find out Hamza's bored one day and he goes up to Veronica and says, hey, I think you should have a house meeting. So Veronica goes and rallies everyone together and forms up a second house meeting. I think she's been there for two or three weeks and she's had two house meetings. You know, uh, they usually don't go too well. But you know what? This one, there was a lot of hot and cold moments I found. I think she made a few good points. Uh, but at the same time, I think she made a lot of mistakes in this one. You know, she does talk about how, um, you know, her... And Hamza, and you know what, here she is kind of throwing Hamza under the bus a little bit. She's saying, you know, her and Hamza decided to put up Jesse and Olivia. And also said something along the lines how, uh, you know, her and Hamza felt that, you know, Olivia felt too safe. So they were going to kind of go in and stir shit up and tell her she's not safe and all that stuff. Um, you know, by saying that, it kind of puts Hamza in a bad spot, you know, because it, it's, you don't want people to see how you see the game. And, you know, audi the audience obviously knows that Hamza is all about trying to entertain us and all that stuff and doing little things like that, poking the bear. But, I mean, for all we know, maybe the other house guests don't know that. So by Veronica saying, you know, oh, Hamza's idea was to stir shit up and this and that, it kind of lets them know what kind of a player he is. And it might not be the biggest thing or might not sound like the biggest thing to the casual viewer or to people watching this video but i'm telling you guys there is 
nothing to do in that house and the littlest bit of information people can blow it up to be the biggest thing it's these are people in the game they're there to to kind of like manipulate people and kind of throw people under the bus that's the nature of the game so you know by by veronica saying you know hamza's idea uh hamza this hamza wanted to stir the pot uh he also she also talked about how when Jesse came in and said he wanted to go after showmances and she was happy and she was cheering. Yeah, you know, well, I'm sure Derek and Kayla don't appreciate that she's happy that Jesse wants to go after the showmances. So in this meeting, I'm pretty sure she pissed off Liv. She pissed off D uh, Dela, whatever they're called, Derek and Kayla. So she's making, she's pissing a lot of people off by saying the things she's saying. So I think, I think that the meeting didn't go uh, necessarily as planned, I guess. But she did make some some good points, you know. And she was saying she's there to play and this and that. But I'm pretty sure by this point everyone kind of wanted her out. But if people were smart, they would have used her as a weapon. Let her and Erica go head to head. Uh, it's just a shame that people didn't see this. So there was this big house meeting. Uh, she it was like 20 minutes, and I mean 20 minutes of her straight talking. Um, you know, um, she didn't really let anybody else talk and just like didn't even stop to breathe. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you something. I, I I actually like Veronica. I think she was great for the show. I'm happy she got on. Uh, you know, she seems like a great girl. And, uh, you know, she just, she wasn't a big fan of the show. So she doesn't get how a lot of the things work. And she even said about throwing her vote. She just didn't understand uh, how it would affect her and, and all that stuff. And it was our first time voting. Listen, I get it. You know, she doesn't get the show. She's there for entertainment and she did a good job. She did what she was there to do. And I, my hat's off to her. I think she was a great, great addition to the cast. So that was her house meeting. And I guess it didn't really go as planned, but you know, she tried. And I, and I liked the fact that she had fire in her and she was all amped up. And she said her piece. She didn't go down without swinging. And I, I respect that. I really respect that about her. And um, you know what? Good for her. So uh, that that's the speech. I, like I said, didn't go as planned. But you know what? It was some good entertainment while it was there. All right. So Veronica gets evicted 9 to 1. Uh, Will, I believe, is her only vote, which is, you know, it's pretty obvious he's going to do that. And Veronica leaves. Again, I really liked Veronica. Um you know, I just, everything about her, she's a different kind of player. I like that. Um, you know, she's out there. She's wild. I, she had a lot of fire. I respect that. So Veronica does leave, and she is the first victim of the double eviction night. So right when Veronica leaves, the house guests get back together. They have to go outside, and it's an HOH comp, and it's a knockout comp. Guys, I love this competition. It happens every single year. One of these knockout comps happen every single year, and I'll tell you, it means a lot because this type of competition shows you exactly where every person stands in the house and who where they rank with who. So it starts off Olivia and Alejandra, the first two. Olivia gets it right, and she has to pick two people to go on. She picks Ryan and whoever she picks. I don't remember. But what it tells you right there is Ryan is Olivia's first target. Ryan and whoever she picks is Olivia's first target. She doesn't want them to win HOH, so she wants one of them out of this competition, and the other one will still be there and then try to get them out the next round. And it just goes to show, the more people get picked, the less friends they have. And if someone's picking you to go up in this competition, it's because they don't want you to win. Trust me, they're going to pick up two people, they're going to put them up there, that they want either one of them to lose. So if I don't trust two people in that house, I'm going to put both of them on that block it guarantees that one of them doesn't have a chance to win hoh that's the way this competition works but if you pay attention okay you notice who doesn't get picked not even one time the only reason that person had to go up on that podium was because there was nobody else to pick and that was will so you have Olivia and Ryan going back to back, head to head, and I loved it. I, I just love the whole story of it. You know, you have Olivia calling Ryan, Ryan calling Olivia. It's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then you have Will. So what you have is Olivia, and the only two people she can pick is Will and Ryan. So that's the only reason he actually went up on that podium is because there was no one else to pick. That goes to show how good his social game and where he stands in the house right now. Nobody wanted him up on the block and to be eliminated. It's a very, very good good it's a very very good telling for him that he is safe and he has a lot of friends and a lot of pull in this house so 
I really like how this competition ends. It ends up being Ryan and Olivia, the final two sitting there. One of these two will be HOH. And these are the two that have been battling back and forth this whole competition. So Olivia wins. Ryan gets it wrong and Olivia wins. Olivia is your HOH for the double eviction, which is just incredible. It's just, it's a good, it's perfect timing to see how this girl goes from literally no airtime, nobody knows who she is, to all of a sudden she starts really playing. Her character starting to come out on the TV and then boom, she wins HOH on a double eviction and gets this chance to make this big move. It's just, you can't write a better story than that. And I'm pretty sure the producers backstage are licking their lips and they're loving that. So it's just great. I'm really happy for her. Glad she did it. And so she wins her HOH, goes into the pantry and starts talking to Alejandra. And I, I don't remember the other person she talked to, but she basically said she was going to put up Maddie and put up Marin. She tells that to Alejandra and whoever the other person was. I'm sorry. I don't remember who it was. And I guess that was the plan. Then Johnny comes in and says, what are you doing? And as soon as she says, I'm sorry, I don't know if he thought he was going to go up or whatever, but he, whoever it was, he's like, you can't put Maddie up or this and that, or she won't go, whatever it was. And he changed her mind. He ch it looks to me, I mean, from what I gather is he changed her mind. So he, here she is telling Alejandra and the other person that, yeah, it's going to be Maddie and Marin. But as soon as Johnny comes in, he's like, no, you can't do this. And she's like, okay, no problem. Let's do Ryan and uh, Marin, I believe it was. So Johnny kind of changed her mind. And I kind of, you know, I kind of like that. But it goes to show how close is she with Alejandra. If she's telling Alejandra one thing and then Johnny comes in, she's like, okay, no, I got to listen to Johnny. So that kind of, I'm a little confused on that. Uh, I guess she's closer to Johnny. Maybe not. I don't know. But it just, it was kind of weird how she listened to Johnny over Alejandra or at least lied to Alejandra, whatever it is. Anyway, um, so she puts up Ryan and Marin. Now we go out to the veto. This is actually a pretty cool veto. And, um, you know, they have their six people playing. I believe it was like Paris, Hamza, uh, Ryan, uh, Olivia, whoever. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, and Ryan wins the veto. Now, Ryan was the target. Ryan was going to go home. So I kind of like how it all plays out. How we go from this HOH competition. You have Ryan and Olivia just going head to head. Battling it out. Boom, boom, boom. Knocking everyone out. They end up in the finals. Olivia wins. Ryan goes on the block. But then Ryan wins the veto to save himself. This is just a great story. You can't write anything better than this. It's a good back and forth. He's supposed to go home. Uh-uh, not today. He saves himself. But what does Olivia do? She goes and puts Hamza on the block. Block. You know, now here's the irony in all this, okay, is Olivia was Hamza's original target. When he was HOH, he wanted Olivia out. Instead, he went and got Jesse out. Now, here's the thing, you know, you fast forward one week and boom, Olivia's HOH and she takes her shot at Hamza and he's out the door. So if he would have taken his shot at who he wanted to target, you know, instead of trying to make better TV, you play for yourself. This is what I say over and over. You make the move that works for you. So he obviously felt, and I'm going to tell you something, Big Brother is all about perception. Okay, so, you know, to the viewers and myself, too, it's like, why would he target Olivia? You know, it doesn't make sense. And and I was the same way. I, I felt the same. Like, what is he doing? But Big Brother is all about perception. Your game is your perception of everyone. Obviously, he didn't trust Olivia. He knew if she would have won, she would have put him up on the block and out the door. Obviously, they had no connection, no love for each other or something. So to him, a big move would be getting Olivia out because Olivia would have taken the shot at him. So but to the viewers, it's like, why the hell would you take Olivia out? She's not doing anything so that's the difference of being in the house and playing and feeling the vibes and knowing the chemistry in the house than to just us sitting on the couch watching it from home so he should have gone with what he thought which is original gut feeling was olivia has to go because she's clearly targeting me and yet he went with the big move for tv trying to please the crowd and instead he ends up going home by the girl he should have taken out so it's just a full circle it's a shame. But anyway, Olivia puts him up on the block. It's a double eviction. Now, here's the thing. He didn't get backdoored. There's a big difference between a backdoor and a, um, a, a black backdoor and like a blind side, okay? When someone gets backdoored, they didn't play in the veto. Hamza had a fair shot at winning that veto. So he had he did, he did get to compete. He could have won that veto and saved himself, but he didn't. So he did not get backdoored. Um, he just got renominated, is what he did. He was just a renom, and he just didn't save himself. 
Um, so anyway, this is the double eviction. Hamza does go home. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Um, you know, I, I appreciate and respect what Hamza did for this season. He is a, he's a good entertainer is what he is. Now, listen, he's not the greatest player. He's not a very good player at all. But that's not what he's there for. He is there to entertain the crowd. And that's what he did. He did a very, very good job of it. And I really respect that. I, I You know, when I saw his bios, um, I just didn't like who he's like, oh, I want to be a lone wolf, this and that. But that's off going off the bio. And he didn't really play that way. Again, people can say what they want in the bios. And I felt he didn't really play the way he was saying he was going to. He did a really good job. He played his part. He knew his role. His role was to entertain. And he did that. The problem is players like that will not win so they will get a lot of respect and credit from the audience because it's a show about entertainment and he is entertaining them that's what they're in they're tuning in to watch they want entertainment and he gave it to them again not a great player but and that's not a shot at him this is just reality i i he's there to entertain and he was fantastic at it he did what he was supposed to do so good for him uh kind of sucks that he's gone because you know that that's a big hole to fill that entertainment uh you know losing veronica and hamza that's two entertainers they're losing in a span of 20 minutes. That's not really good for the show uh, as a whole. You know, it's good for the players, but for the show, you know, when you lose the entertainers, eh, it's not really a good thing. So, uh, you know, all respect to Veronica, all the respect to Veronica and Hamza. Very good at what they were there to do. They were there to entertain. They did a great job and uh, they will be missed on the season uh, because of that. All right. Now I got to say... I'm just loving the Alejandra Olivia duo. Uh, you know, they can't they kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, again, I'm not watching too much of the feeds. I did see the meeting. I watched that. But other than that, I'm not really watching too much of the feeds. I'm trying to keep it to an edited show so I don't know the behind the scenes things and I can kind of give my view just kind of green to it all and just kind of see where my head would be at. So I'm trying to keep away from the feeds. Um, but anyway, I, I'm really liking the story that's building between the two of them. You know, Olivia was, was literally non-existent for the first three weeks of the show, non-existent, no diary room sessions, just no, no airtime, no idea who this girl is. And all of a sudden she just emerges and I'm loving it. You know, with the, the talk with Erica, about the veto and the fake game talk with Veronica. I, I just like it. I'm liking where they're going. Uh, I think it's a good duo and I can't wait to see how it plays out and how far they take each other. And uh, you know, the other thing too, uh, I actually believe one of them can win this show, um, and I mean it. I think uh, Alejandra has a very, very good shot of taking it all the way, and uh, you know, I'd like I wouldn't mind seeing that either. I wouldn't mind seeing Alejandra taking it all the way, but I'm really, really liking this duo, and I, I really can't wait to see uh, how it plays out in the end. All right, guys. Well, there you go. That's the recap for the week. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a you know a great show, and I really feel like production is starting to, you know, get, starting to, to figure it out and get it. Like, guys, we have so much footage and we're, we're showing this crap that doesn't need to be on the show. And they're finally starting to show the good stuff. The last two episodes have been amazing. They're doing a really good job. And I think they're listening to the fans because I know a lot of people uh, have been complaining about the, the shows and how they're just, they're putting in this crap and garbage that nobody cares about. The shows were boring, but the last couple have been incredible. And it's like old school Big Brother. And I love that. You're seeing a lot of games talk which is actually going on in the house but yet when it would come to the episodes they'd put this crap that nobody cares about you know so it's re i'm really happy that they're starting to say okay guys this is what the audience wants they're seeing all the game talk let's give it to them and they're actually pulling through so good on that and uh I, i'm i really 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 like the last couple episodes so here's the thing i think after this week i think erica is going to be uh, she's not going to be in the best spot, uh, or maybe not. She's not going to be in as good as a spot as she was. She just lost Hamza. That was kind of one of her main people. I don't think she's doing too bad, though. I, I don't think she's in a great spot, but I, I still think she's okay. Uh, Paris is uh, kind of okay. Maddie's, you know, I, I, feel, I feel like there's a lot of people that are kind of okay, and it, it can kind of go either way. A lot of people are all over the place. And I feel like, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of people that are kind of on that line where they can go be nominated uh, at any time, which is, it's just, it's fun. It's good TV because a lot of seasons is so predictable. If this side wins, this person's going up. If this side wins, this person's going up. Where I find this season, there's a variable. There's a lot of different people that literally could be nominated and going home. So it's really exciting to watch. I'm, I'm really starting to like this season. The last, the first couple of weeks were kind of whatever, but I'm really starting to like it. And I just hope they continue on this 
this pace. And there's some good players in there that, that are really playing smart, and I like that. So um, anyway, guys, I hope you like it. Hit that subscribe, uh, subscribe button. Hit that like button. I want to start doing more giveaways. Like I said, I have veto chips. I have, I don't know, I have tons of stuff back here that I am willing to part with some of this stuff. And I know there's a lot of fans out there would just love to have a piece of the house. I have tons of the stuff. So you know what? And, and I know what this show means to, to the fans and, and just how much something like, you know, this veto shit, chip, man, you know, like something like that. People would love that, you know? So anyway, um, stay in, stay in touch. Keep subscribing and, and, and liking and commenting. Leave comments below. And I will be doing more giveaways um, you know, I just, I just like to give back. You guys have been so great to me, you know, uh, so much positive, positive feedback. I see the love. Thank you guys. I hear you. I see you. Thank you very much. Um, so anyway, this is my, my week four double eviction recap. I will be back next week.